Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Prashant and welcome back to UGC NET series. In this video, I will be discussing about DI, uh, data interpretation, uh, which is very easy and you can easily score 10 marks uh, in this section. So, uh, in this video, basically I will be teaching you the standard approach or the direct approach. I am not going to teach shortcuts because uh, shortcuts will help only those who are already good with the mathematics, right? So, I am going to teach you the direct approach. Even I follow the same approach because UGC is, a, <coughs> UGC is an exam where uh, there is a time restriction. Uh, we need to finish it within 3 hours but I always feel uh, it's sufficient, okay? You don't need to go with the shortcuts or some tricks. You can, you can just follow my approach uh, which is very direct and you'll get an idea how to approach these questions, okay? So let's start. I am taking the questions from uh, last exam. So these are the DI questions uh, based on time, speed and distance. So this is the first question. Uh, so even before reading the question, first look, have a look at the table and see what they have given. Identify the variables first, okay? So in this example, there are three variables. The names of the train, A, B, C, D, E, number of, I mean the days, Monday to Saturday and the average speed, okay? First be clear with this. Now start reading the question and don't read the question uh, entirely at a time, okay? Don't read it at, at, at a stretch. So have a, um, always have a pause in between, okay? So for example, for train A, they, so they are talking about train A, if the average speed on Saturday is 20% more than that on Wednesday. So this is one statement, right? So whatever I have written on red color is something which I got that from the question itself, okay? So when they are asking these type of questions, always give coding, okay? So in this case, I have given a Saturday average speed as X and for Wednesday I have given Y. So to start with the first step, uh, the average speed on Saturday, that is X, that is equal to they are saying it's 20% more than that of Wednesday. So I took Wednesday as Y. So I will write Y more than. So I use plus 20% of Y. So this is the first equation. So by just solving that, you will get X equal to 6Y by 5 or Y equal to 5X by 6. Okay, clear. Now read the next statement. Main of the average speeds over all the 6 days is 67 km per hour. Okay, so you know mean. Mean is nothing but we add everything and divide by the number of items. In this case, it is the number of days which is given as 6. So while you are adding, uh, we don't know the average speed on Wednesday and Saturday, right? So we will keep them as X and Y. So we will add them. So X plus Y plus remaining speeds, okay? 72 plus 80 plus 64 plus 54. So it was given as 67. So the mean is 67. So by solving that, you will get an equation X plus Y equal to 132. Now the next statement is a question actually what they are asking. Now they are asking what is the average speed on Saturday, okay? So that is we took Saturday speed as X, right? So we need to solve the value of X. So you can do in uh, do this in two ways. Uh, you can just substitute uh, the value of Y as 132 minus X in the first equation or you can uh, <coughs> substitute the value of Y as 5X by 6 in the second equation. In either way, you will get the same answer, okay? So by solving this, you got X as 72. So uh, I have told you, right, uh, be conscious with the coding. Uh, whenever you see that X equal to 72, you need to see your coding, whether you have given uh, X for Saturday or Wednesday. Okay, it is very important. Uh, don't ignore this. So in this case, X is Saturday. So the answer is 72 km per hour. I hope it's clear. Okay, uh, now coming to second question, uh, just start reading and just follow my approach. Uh, give a pause after every statement. They are saying train D. So they are talking about train D and there are two missing values in the train D. Okay. Monday and Thursday. Okay. Clear. Train D runs 150 kilometers more on Monday than that on Thursday. So this is one statement. Now they are talking about distance, right? Which was not given in the table. So I will take capital D as distance and I will code it as DX for Monday and DY for Thursday. So what will be the first statement in the form of equation now? DX that is the distance traveled by train D on Monday is equal to what they have given more than uh, 150 kilometers more than that on Thursday. So Thursday I took it as, I took it as dy right. So dy when I say more than you put plus symbol and 150. So the first red color dx equal to dy plus 150, 150 is the equation of the first statement that is clear. And then they have given times taken by the train on Monday and Thursday are 5 hours and 4 hours respectively. They have given times directly. So I will code it as Tx and Ty. So Tx will be the time taken by the train on Monday and Ty will be that on Thursday. So Tx equal to 5 and Ty equal to 4. And then if the average speed of this train on Monday 
is 15 kilometers per hour more than that on Thursday. So let's go to the table and see the average speed on Monday. So it was not given and also average speed on Thursday is also not given. So I will take it as X and Y. So for speed, I will code it as capital S. So SX is equal to, they are telling 15 kilometers per hour more than that on Thursday. So the equation will be SY plus 15. So it's clear, right? Now then, they are asking us to find the mean of the distances traveled by the train on Monday and Thursday. So what will be the equation for that? You know mean, mean is nothing but you add them and divide by the number of items, okay? So in this case, it will be DX plus DY divided by number of variables are only 2. So you will divide it by 2. So we need to calculate that. So now we got all the equations, right? So now we need to solve it. So in order to get distance in these questions, we need to calculate the speeds first, okay? So for that, we use the formula distance equal to speed into time. So this is the standard formula, okay? So by using that, just substitute, okay? For first train on Monday, it will be dx is equal to sx into time was given as 5. You write 5. And for dy, it will be sy multiplied by 4 because it, it has given as 4 hours, right? It is clear. Now you do one thing, uh, in the in place of S, Sx, we can substitute Sx as Sy plus 15 because we got it from the third equation, right? So what I will do, dx equal to Sx into 5, right? So in place of Sx, I will put Sy plus 15 multiplied by 5. So by solving that, you will get 5Sy plus 75 on the right side. And on left side, I can replace dx with dy plus 150. So we got it from the first equation. So go to the first equation where dx equal to dy plus 150, right? So I'll put it. And now in place of dy, I will put 4sy so that we can um, make them equal, right? Right side and left side. So it will be 4sy in place of dy plus 150 that is equal to 5sy plus 75 on the right side. So by solving this, you get, you got SY as 75. So if you know SY, we know SX, right? Because go to the third equation, SX is nothing but 15 kilometers per hour more than SY. So 75 plus 15 will be 90. Similarly, uh, substitute it in the uh, distance formula also. So you will get distance traveled by train D on Monday as 450 and that on Thursday as 300. So basically now we got dx and dy, but they are asking us to calculate the mean. So you need to add them and divide them by 2. So we've got 375 kilometers. So see, it might sound little uh, complicated, you know, while explaining in this way, but when you start solving it in exam, you don't need to write each step, okay? Uh, once, you, uh, <coughs> once you get used to these things, uh, you can easily solve these type of questions in uh, less duration, okay? Okay, and now coming to the third question, uh, I will follow the same approach, just see how I am uh, converting the texts into equations, okay? If train B, go to train B and there are there is only one missing value that is on Tuesday, okay? If train B covers a total distance of 3400 kilometers during all the six days by taking a total time of 40 hours, it is very direct, they have given total distance, so see what I have written in red color, total distance D is equal to 3400 kilometers. Similarly, total time t is equal to 40 hours, okay? And now read the next statement. The average speed of this train during all the six days is dash percent less than the average speed of this train on Monday. So this is the question what they are asking. So just write it in the form of equation. So see the third red statement. Average speed during all days is equal to average speed on Monday minus what, you know, dash percentage, so I will code it as x percentage of average speed of this train on Monday. So this is the third statement. So remember one thing, the formula for average speed is equal to average distance, that is the, sorry, the total distance travel divided by the total time. So by using the first two equations, that is total distance and total time, we can calculate the average speed during the total six days, okay? So the average speed will be total distance that is uh, 3400 divided by 40 hours. So the average speed in this case is 85 kilometers per hour. Okay. Till here it's clear, right? So what we need to do now, we need to substitute that in the third equation. So now we got average speed during all days, which is 85. So 85 is equal to, uh, what is the average speed on Monday? Go to table, go to train B and what is the average speed on Monday? It's 88. Okay. So 88 minus we are asking what percent less than, so x percent, so I will convert it into x by 100 of 88, fine. So solve this and you will get the x value as 3.409. So they have asked us to uh, round off to two digits after decimal, right? 
So the answer will be 3.41, third option. And now coming to the fourth question, see, uh, just follow the approach. If the mean of the average speeds of train C during all the six days is 25% less than the average speed of train B on Saturday. So they are talking about two trains here, train C and train B. So be careful while checking the table, okay? So what is the formula for mean? You know that, right? We need to add everything. So just uh, write the mean of uh, train C. So it will be 54 plus 70 plus 72. Thursday we don't know. So I will take it as X plus 64 plus 60 divided by number of days. That is 6. That is equal to 25% less than the average speed of train B on Saturday. So what is the average speed of train B on Saturday? Go to the table. It's 90. So 90. So there are they are saying less than so 90 minus how much percent less than 25 percent so 25 percent that of 90 so we got the first equation now you read the second statement okay the average speed of train d on tuesday is approximately dash percent more than that of train c on thursday so they are talking about two trains train d and train c okay so just see how i converted it in the form of equation on left side we need to write the average speed of train d on tuesday so go to table and the average speed of train day on Tuesday is 120 km per hour. So on left side, it will be 120. That is equal to, they are asking dash percent more than that of train C on Thursday. So go to train C and what is the average speed of train C on Thursday? We don't know that. So I will be taking that as X, okay? So that is 120 is equal to X plus and dash percentage. So I will be coding it as Z percentage that of X. So this is the second statement. So now start solving this we got two statements now through the mean equation i mean the first equation if you solve it you will get x value as 85 okay now substitute that in the second equation because 120 is equal to x plus z percent of x right through first equation you got x equal to 85 so 120 is equal to 85 plus z by 100 that of 85 so by solving this you will get z value as 41.176 which is around 41 option 1 i hope it's clear okay uh, now coming to the next question for train e if the ratio of average speed on saturday and friday is 5 is to 3 so let's see the table uh, what is the average speed of train e on friday and saturday they have not given so i'll be taking them as x and y so be careful whenever you attempt these kind of questions always write the coding on the rough sheet during exam okay x equal to saturday and y equal to friday so be clear with this don't ignore this thing okay so uh, how will you convert this into equation the average speed on saturday that is x divided by the average speed on friday that is y will be equal to 5 by 3 okay clear and now the second statement is the average speed on saturday that is x is equal to dash percent more than that on friday so x equal to y that is the speed on friday plus dash percentage z percentage of y so we got two equations now so how to solve this by using the second equation x equal to y plus z i will convert it into normal z by 100 into y so x equal to i will take y as common in this case okay once you uh, pull out y it will become 1 plus z by 100 so what now what i will do in order to cancel y i will replace x in the form of y so what is the value of x x equal to 5y by 3 how we have we got this we got it from the first equation right x is to y x is to y is equal to 5 is to 3 that means x equal to 5y by 3 so on left side it is 5y by 3 and on right side it is y multiplied by 1 plus z by 100 so both the y gets cancelled and if you solve it you will get the z value as 200 by 3 so check the options okay they have given it in the form of fraction so i didn't calculate it so 200 by 3 is nothing but 66 2 by 3 Okay, now, uh, see, they won't give the same type of questions every year, right? So, uh, last time they have given the distance, speed and time, okay? Before that, this is, the, this is a question from uh, July 2022. They have given a question on percentage and ratios, okay? In this case, you don't need to apply any formulas like what we have applied in the uh, previous questions, okay? Distance equal to speed into time. So, this is a kind of direct question, but just, you know, I'm trying to teach you the approach, okay? How to solve any question in DI no matter whether it is speed, distance, percentage, ratios, okay? So just see, uh, you just follow the same approach. Start the st uh, start reading the statements, okay? Now, before that, you need to look at the table, right? Identify the variables. In this case, there are around three variables, if I'm not wrong. The name of the states, A, B, C, D, E, and the percentage of population below poverty line, okay? 
and the proportion of males and females for both below poverty line and above poverty line so whenever they are giving these kind of words below and above poverty line and on left side they have given only percentage of population below poverty line so how to get the percentage of population above poverty line you just need to subtract these values from 100 for example for state a the percentage of population above poverty line will be 100 minus 35 similarly 100 minus 25 and so on so write it down on the rough sheet parallel to this 35 25 24 19 and 15 so that it will um, decrease your time in solving the question okay so now let's start with the question i'll just uh, solve only one question i'm just trying to give you an idea how to approach these kind of questions okay what will be the number of females above poverty line in the state d so now they're talking about state d and now they are asking the number of females above poverty line in the state d if it is known that the population of the state d is 8 million so try to differentiate the questions okay what is statement and what is question in this question the statement is the population of state d is 8 million so write it uh, no write it first okay so go to left side and see the red color first statement the population of state d is 8 million okay so the other part is the question what what will be the number of females above poverty line okay so before calculating that we don't know the population of um, d above uh, above poverty line right because in the table they have given 19 percent okay that is below poverty line how to get above poverty line i told you right 100 minus 19 so it is around 81 percent so out of total population 81 percent is the proportion of people who are above poverty line so we know the total population now it is which is around 8 million so what will be the population above poverty it is not just simply multiply 8 million with 81 percent so the answer is 6.48 million so so now we got the population above poverty so what are they asking they are asking the number of females above poverty line so go to the ratio section okay so go to the ratio section and go to above poverty line okay because the question was about above poverty line and for which state state d so the ratio is around 5 is to 3 right so they are asking about females now so the ratio was given in the form of m is to f so what will be the female ratio i mean the female count it will be 3 divided by total ratio that is 5 plus 8 multiplied by the total population which is above poverty line so we know the total population above poverty line which is 6.48 multiply it with 3 by 8 so you you get the answer is 2.43 for example uh, if they are asking about the number of males above poverty line so the formula will get reversed okay because the ratio was given in the form of m is to f male is to female so in this case first will be 5 divided by 5 plus 3 which is 8 so 5 by 8 multiplied by 6.48 so the answer will be around something 4.0 something so you can do it in that way or you can just subtract directly from the total population above poverty which is 6.48 minus 2.43 so in either way you will get the answer so what i am trying to tell you is uh, how to approach these questions no matter whether it's distance or speed ratios or percentages okay this year they might be giving something new but just follow this approach read the statement and convert the statement into form of an equation okay so after writing all the equations then look for the logic so this will definitely help you i hope it's very clear uh, if you are having any other queries uh, please comment them in the comment section and i wish you all a very good luck for your exam and thank you